Hadrosaurs, also known as the duck-billed dinosaurs, have often been portrayed as punching bags. Not always, but typically, a unlucky hadrosaur, like the Edmontosaurus or Parasaurolophus, ends up being dinner in a motion picture. And it's hard to blame people for using them as easy dinners, as their appearances are fairly innocent. They do not possess spiked or club tails, nor do they have deadly horns on their head, or armor made of skin, making them an easy target for carnivores. Well, not really, because through the years of research, paleontologists have come to find that hadrosaurs were not all that defenseless and used many different tools and tricks to thrive, as after all, by the time of the late Cretaceous, hadrosaurs were the most populous type of dinosaurs on Earth, something that does not happen by luck. The first and most obvious way hadrosaurs defended themselves was by sticking together. This is a common tactic seen with animals today, because as the saying goes, safety in numbers, and hadrosaurs knew how to do numbers. Thanks to an extremely rare find in Montana, paleontologists know that hadrosaur herd could grow to immense proportions, as a herd of Mayasaura, numbering 10,000, was discovered in a prehistoric volcano field. Herds of this size would grant much needed protection, since it provided more eyes and ears to look out for predators, as well as decreasing one's chance of being targeted. But like with any herd, cracks would have occurred at some point, and in those cases, hadrosaurs had more tricks up their sleeves. One such trick was that they appeared to have been fairly decent endurance runners. The structure of muscles tells a lot on how an animal runs, and the hadrosaurs were built for long distance. Paleontologists used a digital simulation to reconstruct the muscles of both hadrosaurs and carnivorous theropods and found that the hadrosaurs muscles were better designed for running longer than their predatorial counterparts, meaning that if they saw a threat charging at them, there was a fair chance they would have been able to outtire the chaser before being caught. This being said, the study did also suggest that predatory dinosaurs seem to have had higher top speeds, so an ambush could spell disaster, which is why hadrosaurs had a backup, their size, and not just the actual size of their bodies, but how fast they were able to achieve their maturity. Hadrosaurs had huge gaps in their bones that, while alive, would have been filled with blood vessels, an indicator of rapid growth. And one test on raw data growth rates of both hadrosaurs and in this case Tyrannosaurus showed a stark difference in how fast each reached adulthood. For hadrosaurs, it appeared that within 10 to 12 years, they reached their full sizes, whereas for Tyrannosaurus, it took 20 or more years. This would have been a huge asset, as reaching a adulthood faster meant that there would have been less predators capable of taking them down. Adding to this, they also reached sexual maturity much faster, leading to higher reproduction rates. Thus, they could outproduce carnivores as well. And another useful aspect of their size was that many hadrosaurs grew to extreme proportions, adding yet another layer of defense to themselves. In many environments, it appears that a lot of hadrosaurs were the same size or even larger than local predators, similar to animals in the modern world. One example of this is the famous pair of T-Rex and the Edmontosaurus. It is believed by some that Tyrannosaurus would have left large and healthy Edmontosaurus alone due to their immense size, which would have made hunting them difficult, perhaps rather preying on the weak and young. An adult Tyrannosaurus, as many know, wasn't exactly small, but neither was the Edmontosaurus, and they both reached similar sizes, with one study of fossils found in the Hell Creek Formation even suggesting that certain specimens outsized fully grown T. rexes. Another example is the Mongolian genus of hadrosaur, the Saurolophus. This was a titan who could reach 43 feet or 13 meters in length, with some individual individuals, indicating even larger sizes. On top of this, it was also a heavy dinosaur, coming in at 11 tons, making full-grown adults comfortably larger than its predator of those times, the Tarbosaurus, which is believed to have been 3 meters or 10 feet smaller in length than the Saurolophus. And hadrosaurs got even bigger than this, showcased by the Shantungasaurus. This was a hadrosaur found in modern-day China that is so far the largest known kind, capable of growing to an astonishing 15 meters or 49 feet in length, while weighing 13 tons. Hunting a large hadrosaur, even when it's not fighting back, would have been a risk-filled ordeal due to their size. However, some think that hadrosaurs did have a self-defense weapon, its legs. Some believe that they could have rear-kicked like a horse. This being said, others think that their large size would have made a kicking move impossible, which still would not have rendered the legs completely useless, as in a hunt, a fallen predator may very well be trampled, which would have caused great injuries due to the sheer mass of hadrosaurs. It was thanks to a combination of these tools and assets that hadrosaurs were able to become the most successful dinosaur despite living with some pretty ferocious carnivores.